You're listening to the Strategically Podcast. I'm Tyler Collins. And I'm Brandon Collins. We like to say that strategy is all about finding the best way to get from where you are to where you want to be. Head over to our website, Strategically, that's strategic.li, for more tools and content. But right now, you can join us for this casual conversation where we dive deep into the concepts behind thinking strategically in life, business, or whatever you care about. In this episode, we talk about an important question. Are there strategic principles that are always true? If so, what about conflicting guidance? As we go, we'll evaluate whether or not it's actually better to be the first one to do something. They say the early bird gets the worm, but is that actually right? Apple, Nintendo, and Uber are just a few examples we touch on. Let's get into it. Is it even possible to write a book on all the principles of strategy? I think it's a good question <laughs> to mull over here in the, in the beginning. Sure. Um, I mean, I think then to answer that, it's really a reframing. I would almost reframe that to say, is it possible? Because the writing the book part, you know, if you have enough time, you can write a book on anything that can be anything that can be organized and summarized, you can write a book on, Um, you know, encyclopedias are like a book on everything, right? right? For sure. Um, But the question is like, is there one maybe one is the wrong way? Is there a series or a set of ways of thinking about strategy? that is universally true or is there like just, is it all just opinion? Is it all, mm. you know, could someone read whatever or, or come through our ideas and say, yeah, you're, you're either wrong there or I disagree or that's just your opinion or that kind of a thing. Um, because if there is a set of objective realities, then you could discover them yes. and write them down. Right. And if they are objective, eh, which, but what I, I'm just def- refining maybe what I think you mean by that. Um, if they are objective, then that means they would apply in every situation, no matter yes, exactly. what the domain would be. Exactly right. I and do, that also means, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I do think there are maybe some strategic things, principles that are true in certain domains, but maybe not others. Hmm. Um, so that would be interesting I think that, I guess I don't know I, that for sure, but it's, it's a thought in the back of my mind. It's, that's another I, theory. I think I would restate it yeah. to say there are strategic principles that are always true, but that apply to a lesser or greater extent in different hmm. uh, domains. So, like, well, I was going to say, I was just, all I was going to say is I, I draw a line between strategic, you know, maybe strategic principles that are true in a certain domain, but not others. And then there's some that are true in every domain was all I was going to say. But so maybe you're saying oh, it's not that they're not true in other domains. It's just that they apply in a lesser extent to the point that yes. you wouldn't necessarily want to apply them in your domain. Yeah. They're just unhelpful. Not yeah. that they're like wrong. Yeah. Um, okay. Or to push back on that idea. Yep. Someone once said, who is it? Uh, I forget the guy's name. He calls himself the wizard of ads. <laughs> okay. Uh, I kind of want to look him up now. Uh, <laughs> he's a cool dude. Uh, basically, he's a marketing guy. Roy Williams. Okay. And he, his like big thing. So this was probably 10 years ago that I got it. I like was exposed to him and started like listening or no reading his stuff. Um, Oh, what's that? There's a basketball coach. That's not who I'm talking about. Roy Williams. Yeah. He's the coach of the Tar Heels. I believe. Roy R H W dot com. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> I'm looking at his website. It's making me laugh. Okay. So He's a, he's a marketer, but his big thing was, um, radio ads. He wrote like, okay. really great radio ads and then wrote a book about it and then wrote a blog and has a really big following and he sends out a weekly email and everything. Um, and his emails are all really like heady, like very much like what we're doing, but more with advertising. Um, and he does like retreats. I don't know why I'm giving you all this background. No, Anyhow, that's fine. Go ahead. He said this, he's an interesting dude. That's why I want to talk about him. Um, okay. but he said this thing that I never forgot. Um, in one of his emails, he said, there are facts and there are proverbs. Hmm. I I forget if he called them proverbs, but he like basically like wisdom statements. And he's like, a fact is either true or false. You know, two plus two can't be four and five. Yeah. Um, Something can't be read and not read. But then he said a wisdom or a proverb often is both true and false. Hmm. Meaning its opposite is just as true as its statement. So for example, you might say the early bird gets the worm and we all might nod and say, yeah, that's true. But then you could also, the opposite of that is also true. The second mouse gets the cheese. Um, <laughs> right. And so those are two different, two proverbs that are true, but they're, they're sort of, a pl- they're both equally true, but they're also opposite. 
if that makes sense. Um, and so really, I think what's true there, so I'm sort of pushing back against what I said earlier, which is that there are, that there are principles that are always true. And I think what that, what that Roy Williams quote demonstrates is that maybe it's that there are principles, but you have to choose and know when to apply them and when, when a certain one is in effect and when a different one is in effect. Hmm. How does that hit you? Uh, what you're saying is a proverb is probably always true, but sometimes it looks different from different perspectives or, or maybe a better way of saying is like, depending on the situation, it might be true or false. Maybe that's what you're saying. Yes. That's what, that's what Roy was saying. I don't uh-huh. know that I agree. Cause then yeah. let me try to prove it false. I would say those, that example I gave about the early bird and the second mouse, really all you're seeing there is you're, you're too deep. You need to step one step up, meaning the, the strategic principle, and maybe this is wrong, but the strategic principle there is not you should be early or you should be late. The strategic principle is there's actually multiple strategic principles now that I'm thinking about it. Well, let's dive into one. Yeah, let's dive into it. You want to, which one do you want to dive in first? Yeah. Let me start there. So the mouse demonstrates risk management. And when you're thinking about risk management, there are different strategic principles at play, right? You, you, when you're first, there's all sorts of advantages, but there's also extra added risk, right? Um, Yes, that's true. And the early bird gets the worm is talking about opportunities and, um, I don't know, maybe there's more, uh, nothing, or they aren't jumping straight to my mind, but it's basically saying, um, well, I think about wait around, I'm going to throw out this opportunities. Yeah. I'm going to throw out some examples. So we, we know in business, for example, uh, that they call, there's a, a thing called uh, the first movers advantage. If you're the first person to the market with something let, like, let's take Uber. They were, I think they were the first in, in ride sharing. Mm-hmm. They're, they're the biggest. Mm. Does that mean they will win? Not necessarily. I think about it's an advantage. It is an advantage. But I think about Apple, for example, to play against that first movers advantage, which we know is a thing. And and many companies have used that to huge success, you know, billion dollar companies. But when I think about Apple, I feel like what their strategy has been is, hey, let's wait and see what I'm talking about phone phone market right now, because obviously they sell their products. But phone market, let's wait and see what works on other phones. And then we're going to adopt it and do it even better. I feel like that's been their strategy in the yeah. last, you know, really since Tim Cook took over and they've done that very successfully. Obviously they're still number one, um, in many, many categories, including how many, how much money they make <laughs> on phones, <laughs> which is probably the most important category. Um, so again, you're kind of saying there it's true. Both is true. Yes. There's mm-hmm. an advantage being early bird gets the worm. It is true that there's a first mover advantage, but it's also true that, you can be the second, you know, the second mouse gets the cheese or however, whatever, how the Proverbs goes, but you can be the second person and almost do it better sometimes yeah. because the first person tends to hit make a lot of mistakes. obstacles. Yeah. Make mistakes. And they don't necessarily know what they're doing and that can be all refined. And then you can kind of swoop in as the second company on the sidelines and sort of take advantage of all of the mistakes they've made and problems they've had and, um, I'm trying to think of a good example of a company that was for, oh, I know, Atari. That's a great example. Atari is the first company that comes in with video games as a huge, you know, actual company making video games. Um, and I think there was a lot of reasons that they that they failed. But really, when you think about it, Nintendo was the second company to be real big on video games. And now they've, be, you know, eclipsed. Obviously, Atari is gone now, but they eclipsed Atari very quickly. And I don't know. Maybe that's not a great example because I do feel like Atari's fall maybe didn't have much to do with the fact that they were first. Yeah. Uh, but I yeah, guess but my point is, go ahead. The technology example is a great one. Yeah. Um, think of all the companies that have launched um, products specifically in technology where the idea was genius and later became earth shattering. I've got it, but I've got a perfect example. It cost too much or it wasn't executed cleanly or the battery was too big Mm. or or the technology wasn't there. The idea was right, but they were too early, but maybe that's different than being the first mover. Go ahead. Give me your example. So uh, the example I just thought of, I think this is actually a perfect example is, uh, this is going to sound really funny. Probably, (laughs) um, is MySpace and Facebook. Okay. Yeah. So MySpace is probably the first true social media network. So you would think they would have first mover advantage. 
they would be the billion dollar huge massive company that Facebook is. But no, because Facebook then came along as the second piece and they added a lot of the stuff they that MySpace didn't have yet. Yeah. Um, and so but in being second, they really became first in a way. I, I don't know that Facebook's being second made them that way. I would say it's because they innovated sure. more readily. So I guess I'm saying. But you could have said is, you could have sat back and said, oh, MySpace has this locked up. Or you could have said, no, the market is not there yet. Like you could have almost said in the early 2000s, hey, this is all social media is ever going to be. But then you have companies like, or even Instagram is another example. Like there were still huge and there probably still are huge spaces in the social media game that weren't explored. And Facebook then comes along to kind of take over those. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe we're getting off track here, but I don't think so. I think what we're doing is we're trying to say, we're taking that one example about Proverbs and wisdom. And is it true and false or is it just that we zoom in too far? So to zoom back out a minute, The question is, is the principle of being the first mover versus being the second mouse or whatever, (laughs) are those actually in conflict or is that actually, this is what I was trying to propose earlier. Okay. Is that actually one strategic principle and the principle would have to be framed something like this, uh, well, but then see the more vague I get, the less helpful it is. Cause what I was about to say was you would say it somehow something like you, your timing is important. That would be the strategic principle, Mm. right? And that is vague, but it's actually, it's still helpful. It's still a strategic element. And you could say, um, you know, there are lots of ways to do timing there. You can try to be the first mover or you can try to be the second mouse and and out innovate the person who came before, or you can try to, um, wait till the technology is really well developed and then do it cheaper than everybody else because you know, the person changed or, or whatever, yeah. but those are all those sort of under the umbrella of one strategic principle. Right. I think that's um, a great, a great point. Cause another one I just thought of this, this is going to sound weird, but, but you'll stick with me for a second. Um, another illustration, dollar shave club. Uh, why do yeah. I bring them up? They're probably the last, big company in the shaving game and you would have thought hey like there's no more new ways to do razors chronologically yeah chronologically exactly there's no more new ways oh yeah there there was one more new way (laughs) which was as a subscription box which was in the mail yeah a totally new uh thing like well other people had done subscription boxes i but it it was kind of new and so they just applied a new thing and in, in, in yeah. a sense, they're like the last, <laughs> they're kind of the last like big, like I doubt there'll be any more new shaving companies or razor companies like there probably will be. But you kind of hear what my point is they're applying new strategies to something that has been around for hundreds yeah. of years. Right. Uh, how men shave yeah, their so faces. Your, your point on that is we restate the point because I've followed that example, but I'm not seeing how it can. I guess my to. point is there's even another prop. There's no proverb for this, but it's almost like the very last, uh, I guess the way I would say it is like, Hey, there's, there maybe is even if you're the last one, the last hmm. word on something, you know what I'm hmm. saying? Yeah. Um, then there's almost an advantage there as well because you can apply new things to it that have hadn't, hadn't been applied because it's such an old established uh, thank, you know, I think another one, uh, this, this honestly maybe has two principles, but I think t- about Tesla again, everybody thought, uh, the automobile's done. Like there's no new innovations that can happen. Um, and Tesla comes along is like, no, what about what the irony of it is electric cars had be started getting big in the nineties and a bunch of people got together to destroy them. But Tesla comes along to say, no, there's actually a new innovation that can happen. And you see that they were the, like other people have tried to start cars and it just hasn't really worked star comp car companies and it hasn't really worked until them. But flip side to that is, are they the last to, you know, are they just applying new principles on an old, old, you know, business strategy mm-hmm. model that's been around forever or are they the first mover in ice, you know, uh, or sorry, ice is internal combustion, but so are they the last in ice or are they the first in electric? You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's, See, you can look at last, both ways. I don't know that there ever can be a, the last or for sure frame it. You sure. will never know if you are the last Absolutely. because dollar shit, both of those examples, 
um, which is interesting, by the way, you mentioned Dollar Shave Club because there's also Harry's. Have you heard of them? Yes. They do the same thing Dollar Shave Club does. So there's yes. also space. I don't for, even. For yeah, more, anyway. yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Um, but as far as innovation goes, all your, what they've done is they've taken um, ingredients. Um, you, you mentioned it, like they're mixing things. Yeah. Um, so the, the model that, you know, I don't know, Gillette or whoever else makes razors that uh, Gillette's the only one I know of, um, <laughs> not, not sponsored by Gillette, by the way. Um, <laughs> you know, they, they took a certain model of marketing and brand management and, um, production and they mixed all that together to make a business model. And Dollar Shave Club took something brand new, which was, a, a um, what'd you call it? Not a subscription, but like a mailbox, a yeah, box in the mail. Box, I guess it yeah. is a subscription. Yeah. A uh, model which was sort of new, not newly invented because it's not like it's a new technology, but it kind of was, it was an innovation mm -hmm. and they mixed that in and ended up, ended up creating a new product, almost like a new meal. New when you like add, yeah. you like add different ingredients to your meal. It's like almost like a new meal at some point. Um, so I guess my point in saying that is every time there's a new and the same with Tesla, the technology advanced to a certain point where there was able, they were able to create a new category of car. Um, because there was a new ingredient that they could mix in to the old, the same old recipe. So I think you do, you have to, you would have to know that there's not going to be any more ingredients that can be mixed in with this specific domain. And yeah. I just don't think you can ever know that to, in order to say, I'm truly the last one, but maybe you're saying maybe there's a deeper principle there. That's not the last, you know? Yeah. I, I guess I, maybe last isn't the right way of thinking about it, but in all these examples, and you know, I just thought of another one, which is bicycling. Uh, where basically the bike mm. is invented and then you get this curve. Uh, you can't see my hand because of the way I've cropped my screen, but put it in <laughs> front of your face. There we go. You get you this go. curve, uh, you know, the hockey stick curve of changes over time, but then it flattens. Like there's a point mm -hmm. where everybody kind of feels like, Hey, everything discovered of how to make bikes better. We've figured it out already, but now you have electric bikes and, you know, bikes with the like fat tire, like there's even more like just recently, I feel like there's been all this like host of innovation on bikes all of a sudden all over again, or hmm. bikes that you can rent in the city, you know, it's a whole new business model. Hmm. Um, so Which it's almost necessarily innovating. Some of those are correct. innovating the actual structure of the They're bike, just but some of them are, business in, model. Yeah. are innovating how you use and access and store your bike, all that. Maybe what we're hitting at is opportunity more so than timing. That actually feels mm. right to me because the mm. first mover op, the first mover principle is really an opportunity. You're hitting something that no one else has done. That's great. The second That's exactly mover, right. you're hitting a different kind of opportunity, which is you can build on what the first mover has done, but take it even farther. And then the, the last piece here, I think we just created a new principle. This is awesome. The last piece we've been hitting on here is opportunity to upset old and established businesses or, uh, you know, whatever it might be, not necessarily businesses, but old and established things and with new strategy and new tactics and you're upsetting it. And it's very similar to what Uber did where everyone kind of thought, Hey, there's no new way uh, to sell um, ride sharing. You know, taxis is a, really a form of ride sharing. Uh, but if everyone kind of oh, thought there's no new way of doing that. Um, and now all they did was like, Hey, yeah, actually we're going to you do it, use it doing an app instead of, you know, a big company and et cetera, et cetera. So I think really the idea is more, there's different ways of uh, approaching opportunities in a, do, in a given space, given a given domain. Yes. Yes. I think and, really is what it is more, more so than and timing. The, and while timing is a huge piece of all of these, cause I, I do feel like they each have their timing. Uh, really the key is opportunity. Go ahead. And the, the different, the different wisdom, the different proverbs are demonstrating mm. different approaches to capture different, not different kinds of opportunities, but different, uh, I don't know, maybe categories of opportunity, different ways of they're, they're really all opportunity proverbs. They're saying, yeah. Hey, getting out early, there's opportunity to be the first one. Yes. Hey, being the second one, there's opportunity there. Yeah. Um, that's really what they're saying. But so, okay, so this is to come full circle back to the original question. Yeah. I do think, even given Roy Williams' really fascinating quote, uh, that there <laughs> are principles that are always true. Op the opportunity principle, I don't know that it's new. Like, I, we probably have, you know, oh, maybe we don't have that in our outline already. We do not. Not that I know of. I mean, I'm sure that's a thing people think about, though. You know, it's like when, when you do... Uh, when you do what the, the classic um, pros and cons list, like I'm mm -hmm. sure people are measuring opportunities. In fact, there's actually a, um, 
a really fascinating way of measuring risk against opportunity that I want to put in the book later. Um, But point is just to say, what we've bumped into is just to say, and I I think this was true. I I thought this was true, but I think we've sort of landed there now that as as long as you zoom out to the right level, Mm. there are principles that apply everywhere. Um, However, I think what also comes with that is the farther you zoom out, the harder it becomes to apply those principles. Like just to say to someone, Hey, you need to keep your eye on opportunity and like really try to seize opportunity. Like, okay, well that's super vague. Like that <laughs> advice is not helpful, yeah, you know? Yeah. Like just work harder. It's like, you might as well like <laughs> just give me a thumbs up and like a pat on the back. Yeah. So, um, that's where those proverbs can be more helpful is like, Hey, here's one way you can take that principle about opportunity and apply it is being the first one. Yeah. There's opportunity there. Yes. And being the last one, there's opportunity there and being the second one, there's opportunity there, you yeah. know? Um, so, so I'm that, that and, and now you can apply it cause you can look at your business. Like, well, let's yes. say, let's say you're an investor and you're trying to get into a market maybe, um, or you're a business and you're kind of trying to figure out where you, where you stand. You can say, was I the first? No. Was I the second? No. Am I going to be the last? No, I'm in the middle. That's not good. Like, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Uh, so maybe point. I shouldn't then try to go with this. Uh, and it's not to, we're not trying to say that you couldn't be successful. I think what we're trying to say and in these proverbs as well is that you're going to be more successful if you're in one of those three categories that you're going to have a we're better. Saying, yes. We're saying there's bonus opportunity yeah. available in these categories and yeah. you're leaving that on the table. You, you're not, you don't get that if you're not Absolutely. in that category, yeah. which doesn't mean that that's the make or break thing. It might Absolutely. be, um, but it might not be. It, it could be more, it would be more helpful. I think is if you can't go to some of the examples we've listed, um, I think, to be a, maybe a dominant leader, uh, to be more, maybe successful. Um, which I think, you know, if you think about the 80, 20 principle, if you're not familiar with that, there, there's a great book on that. Um, so we don't have to super di- deep dive into that here, but Give I think like we're hitting that two too. sentence summary, maybe. Uh, no, or I don't no. think so. Most people okay, will, I come back know that, it. or if not, um, just Google it. Yeah, you can Google it. <laughs> I don't yeah, want to yeah. get super on rabbit trails that, you know, people will probably already know, but I think maybe that's sort of what we're hitting on. Cause I always come, come at it from a 80, 20 type of principle where I don't, I don't want to be like struggling and struggling just to get 20% of a market or just, you know what I mean? Just to get by. Mm. I'm always thinking I want to do 20% of the work and get 80% of the profit. You know what I'm saying? So I think maybe that it, those two principles sort of intertwine in my mind where yeah. you're going to take one of these pieces of opportunity because you want to be a dominant player, uh, whether it's first, second, or maybe last. Uh, last is really not the right way, way of saying it, but uh, we haven't really come up with a better way of saying it. So, Yeah. First... The first mover, I think that's spot on. Absolutely. We might need to write, we should probably write this down. Okay. Maybe it's been said other places. Like I know first mover, you said you were pulling from something. Yeah, that's um, a very common marketing. So first mover for sure. Yep. Uh, I don't know if there's a phrase for like, come behind <laughs> after someone has taken all the risk, like yep. that kind of mouse uh-huh. getting the cheese analogy. Yep. Um, but then certainly the innovator, like the late innovator. The late or the, innovator. That's a great way of saying it. Sort of the, like upsetting the apple cart. Um, we need a phrase to the like second comer. Like, what is that? Yeah. You know, I've been calling it second mouse multiple times with quotes. <laughs> so <laughs> not the most pithy. Uh, People wouldn't know exactly what you mean. No, by that. no, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. <laughs> uh, it's about, so what's that about? It's about avoiding risk. It's about letting someone else take yeah. the risk. And yep. then you, you do the same thing they did, but yeah. because they've already taken the risk, you can do it easier or cheaper. Um, oh, I've, I've often heard it called the me too product, uh, where you see somebody okay. else has the product. Um, and then you just do the exact same thing. <laughs> what about the safe, something like a safe bet, the safe better, oh, okay. the follow up, follow upper, <laughs> the safe bet, the follow up. I don't know that yeah. neither of those are exactly right, but it's no, closer. Yeah. It's closer. We can always come back. Let's yeah. revisit it. Um, okay. You guys- so you want to come back to the main topic that that we're kind of discussing when we got off on it. This isn't really a tangent and uh, we came up with a new principle, which is awesome. Yeah. And it's worth noting, like this is, this is how we're going to write this book. Like, yes, because it's not in some ways there are things that can be tested and there's going to be elements we're going to bring in that were stud came from scientific studies and so on. But most of it is going to be sort of thought experiments and logic 
battles to, to say that's the wrong word, but sort of logic chains of saying, well, if this is true, then this, then yeah. this, let's think, is that, have we seen that in real life? We have. So very, I always forget if it's deduction or induction, I want to say that's induction where you look at life and you pull principles. Anyway, whatever, whatever one of those <laughs> it is, induction or induction, you can look it up. Here's another one. Maybe I'll Google it. <laughs> deduction you know is it before, subtracting. So I think so your deduction is what deduction would be saying because this is because I see this, it cannot be this, this or this. Yeah, correct. So induction would be if because Maybe. I see this, if this must be true. I'm not yeah, sure if know. that's the right term, but I don't think so. Either. Those of you who know logic, you're gonna be, <laughs> yeah, see, here's my thing. Yeah, I'm like the jack of all trades, master of none, classic. Uh-huh. Like I know yeah, sure. enough to know that there's two different kinds of logic, but I don't know which <laughs> one is which. That's awesome. <laughs> Okay, so coming back to our initial discussion, which is our principles universal. Um, is it just that some are applicable in some domains um, and not in others? Is it just that some are more helpful in some domains and not others? I don't know if we've answered that, but I think what we've done is say it kind of depends on the domain. So yeah, I guess I would say given this new principle that we just came up with here on the spot, (laughs) this would probably be um, some data to prove your point, which it's not that these principles aren't universal. It's just that they apply in different ways, depending on the domain. So if you are, if you were going to apply the first movers principle, because I think that is a principle. um, Mm -hmm you wouldn't apply that to dollar shave club, so to speak, because in that domain, the first mover had happened hundreds of years ago. So you aren't, you aren't going to be the first mover, but if you then, and this is what you were getting at. If you then zoom back out Mm -hmm. and you say, well, no, actually the, the principle is not being the first mover. The principle is actually that there's different times for opportunity. Yeah. There's different places for opportunity. That's actually the principle. And then if you know what those different times are, then you could have looked at the, uh, razor market and said, well, yeah, you can't be first or second, but you can be the last innovator. You can mm-hmm. be the later innovator. <laughs> that sounds a little weird. Later, later innovator, <laughs> later innovator. Yeah. That sounds a little weird. So we might need to tweak that, but you can be the last part, you know, you can be sort of the last word. You can be one of the I, ones that I comes call in it later on late innovator. That's okay. Like. Maybe the R got added accidentally then. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think that's right. I, so I think what we're saying is, in every proverb, even if they disagree, there is a principle. And once you get the principle, if it's truly a principle, it will apply, it will apply. in every domain, in every situation. But it is difficult to know exactly how to apply them, right? That's another thing we realized is like... I, I see, I that, think what we realized in this circumstance um, is not that it's difficult to apply. It's more if you know, you have to know that principle very deeply. Because you might have thought, mm. oh, it's only first and second. But then we just came mm. up with a couple of examples where it was actually the last person who, because uh, Dollar Shave Club has really do- been dominating the razor market um, recently. So you would almost be like, hey, it's actually almost a bigger advantage to be that late innovator than it would be to be the first or the second. Um, same with Uber, right? They're, they're one of the hugest, biggest, most, ex- you know, just mm. making money hand over fist because they're the late innovator. Um, and so you almost could have been like, oh, there's no reason to get in the taxi game. Well, yeah, there really wasn't unless you're the late innovator. So I guess I'd say, yeah, it's hard. I don't think it's hard to apply, but it's more, you need to know that principle very deeply because we just came up with a whole new way of looking at it. And if you, um, if you then are approaching the business and you're like, oh, let's be the late innovator. Nobody's innovated in this, in this game for quite a, quite a while. Or yeah. Even even maybe you say, yeah, somebody just was the late innovator. Somebody just took that old Apple cart and upset it. I don't know if I want to do that, you know, mm. uh, but to be fair, that's a good point. There's Uber and Lyft and they're both successful. So there, there may even be opportunity there. <laughs> in well, a sense, I would think- you know, what's interesting is in a sense, while Uber is the late innovator, uh, Lyft might end up being the second mover. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? The second mover, yeah. the thing that li- that Uber uh-huh. innovated. But yeah. I think what you're illust- what that illustrates, and also what um, the Dollar Shave Club and Harry's example also uh-huh. innovate uh, demonstrates is that is what we said. This is this is true. We said there is extra opportunity, sort of yeah. bonus opportunity. But yeah. that doesn't mean that you will fail if you don't get it. I mean, Lyft didn't get the first mover. No. Although maybe you're saying maybe the second. But Harry's maybe is a perfect example. Like. 
I actually don't know if Harry's was second or if Dollar Shave Club was first. I heard of Dollar Shave Club first. Yeah, that's a um, good point. We didn't. Let me look that up. Which is enough different principle about marketing. and But we don't need to come back. Maybe just keep I going with keep, what your I'm point is here. Curious. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. Bottom line is one of them was first, one of them was second. Maybe they launched at the same time. But my point is just to say, even if someone doesn't get the first mover or the second or the, the late innovator, mm-hmm sort of bonus opportunity, there still might be enough opportunity yeah. to be successful. Depending on um, how big the market is for sure. How big is the market yeah. and how expensive and all yeah. that stuff. So yeah, which is just goes to show the other thing I was going to say, getting back to the, the broader question here is principles are universal. Um, but I think this is interesting. And this is why I say it's difficult. They're harder to apply when you, when you actually have a principle, it's more like teaching someone a life skill. Um, and that's harder to, it's harder to both teach and it's harder to learn. We, we always want the tip or trick or yeah, easy yeah. shortcut, like, um, the key that's going to unlock the door, the, yes, you know, the yes. get rich quick scheme, that kind of thing. It, well, no, that's not, that's not, more so that's not a good issue. More like a, like a, give me the, don't make me think too hard. Like it's easy <laughs> to say the early bird gets the worm. You don't have to think about, should I be early? Should I be late? Should I be the second? Hmm. You know, you just think early is always better. I'm always yeah. going to be the early one. Yeah. And that's, there's nothing. Like, it's that, ba- it's not that that's bad. There is opportunity and you will, you will always be fairly, um, that will always make a certain amount of sense. So it's yes. not like that's a bad bit of advice, right? But it's incomplete. You're leaving something on the table mm. to, to oversimplify it. Um, so really what, but then, but then if you zoom out, it takes more skill or more. Um, so I, the way I just wrote it down is like zoom out and see the nuance, because I think you're, to your point, um, you can take these zoomed in principles, like the early bird gets the worm or the, you know, second mouse gets the cheese, um, or the late innovator principle, which is one we just came up with, but <laughs> you could take those and sort of throw up your hands, like just take one and say, well, I'm not first, so I'm going to give up. But if you knew the principle more in a more nuanced way, then you could zoom out and say, OK, I'm not going to be first, but I can be the second mover. I can be the mm-hmm. one that works. And then if somebody sort of takes over that, like comes out ahead of you, then maybe you, you throw up your hand and say, OK, now I would be third, which <laughs> there's no huge opportunity in being third. It's not that there yeah. isn't. It's not that you can't succeed. It's yes. just you're going to have to work really hard, much harder, probably, to be well, third. And I think what you're saying, like, even another to take that analogy a little and tweak it a little bit is to say, like, maybe, um, like, maybe you're a company and you're, you want to launch. Maybe Dollar Shave Club doesn't exist and Harry's doesn't exist. Um, and you're like, hey, we should do this thing where we launch this razor thing. If someone's coming, this bringing this idea to you. And you're like, OK, great. How long is it going to take? It's going to take six months for us to like spin up this brand and like build, build out our manufacturing of razors and all that. And then you find out, Oh, this other company is doing the same thing. Yeah. And they're going to launch in three months. Yes. You might, if all you knew was early bird gets the worm, you would say, we need to double, we need to cut our time. We have to be the first to market. We have to, no matter what it costs, no matter what it takes, no matter what piece we have to That one piece of strategy would heavily influence the tactics and execution. Exactly. Yeah. And you would, what you would do is you would scale the investment that you're making in a way that really wouldn't necessarily make sense because you, if you knew the broader principle and you might think, you know what, I am going to let them go first, yes. but then we're going to come behind and do it better. Yes. And so again, they, you are going to, you are giving up opportunity. That's, there's no Absolutely. doubt about it, but yeah. what you, you're capturing a different a category different or a different bucket. Yeah. You know, another thing I thought too, <clears throat> if you're a company and you were the first mover, you could then, if you know all these principles, you can capture all the opportunity. You can be the second mover and you could be the late innovator. <laughs> and the innovator. You could be all three if you knew this principle. You know what you I'm could, saying? You could, you could take steps to try to capture some exactly. opportunity in each of those buckets. Exactly. That's a great point. That's you a really absolutely point. could, knowing that principle. Because I think that's the other danger. The flip side danger is you would say, oh, we were the first... We were the first mover. Let's just kind of rest on our loyals. Mm. Let our laurels. Let's just be there. Let's just double down on the fact that we're first. And you yeah. see companies doing that. We were the first Absolutely. in fill in the blank. Well, don't be the first in the fill in the blank. Be the first and the second and the late innovator. Yeah. Capture all the don't, opportunity and crush don't your enemies. Only be the first, right? <laughs> be the first. Don't yeah. only be the first. Yeah. Crush your enemies. <laughs> little little uh, art of war going on here. Yeah. 
So I think, coming back around to it, I think what we're saying is the principle... Well, that's all for this episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to hear the rest of this conversation, make sure to subscribe so you get new episodes as they're released. You can also view this content along with visuals on our YouTube channel. The link is in the show notes. We'll see you on the next one.